Biomutant was probably one of the most anticipated non-AAA games to come out this year. And to be honest, I don't know how I feel about this game. After playing this game for a total of 33 hours and completing just about every side quest except for the ones that were bugged, I'm honestly not sure whether to recommend this game or to tell you to stay away from this one. Now I'm normally considerate of the size of the studio producing the game, so I'm not going to be super critical of them. This was made by like 20 to 30 people and that's an incredible effort. Biomutant has a massive post-apocalyptic mutated world that is absolutely gorgeous. I think just about everyone who's played this game can agree on just how fantastic this game looks. The level of detail in all parts of the world is top notch. And to add to this, I had this running on max graphics with a 2080 and the frames didn't drop once. It's such a well-designed world that entices you to go and explore, to travel from one edge of the world to the other to uncover the world's mysteries and secrets, all done through the visuals of an absolutely stunning world. Lush green fields to color rocky outcrops, to the harsh snow and tropical oceans. Everything about this world is colorful and pleasant to the eye. I couldn't praise the developers enough for just how great they made this world look. I often found myself lost in exploration or getting sidetracked mid quest to go and explore some abandoned ruins or dive into a mystical tomb. I felt the urge to explore everything I came across, no matter the circumstances. But this is about where my praises for this game's beautiful world ends. Unfortunately, despite having a huge beautiful open world, it means absolutely nothing if it doesn't have life. Now I'm hesitant to make this point because this could have been a design choice by the developers, or maybe it wasn't. The world is lifeless, there's no travelling NPCs, no random encounters in the world. Enemies all seem to have set locations. Now the reason I say it might have been a design choice is because the developers wanted it to feel like a post-apocalyptic wasteland. But my issue with this is, why make it teeming with plants and beautiful environments? You could travel for thousands of meters and not encounter a single NPC. It feels empty, despite all the different locations to explore. A simple fix to this would be to add random encounters with enemies or have travelling merchants or travelling NPCs in the world. Things like NPCs hunting animals. It's these small details we don't really pay attention to in other games that make the world feel alive. They make the world feel like it would exist on its own, even if we didn't belong in it. And there is the problem with the world. It feels like it centralises around the player. Nothing happens without the player's interaction with the world. The questing, in particular the side quests, seem to be only there to drag out your playtime. When you get a quest, you're forced to travel thousands of meters from the NPC that gives you the quest, which is just obnoxious and annoying. I'm fine with the odd quest or two taking me far away, but you're gonna take me from one side of the map to the other just to kill a bandit chief? Why? It's such a waste of time. Make the quest giver closer to the location of the bandit camp itself and I'd have no issue with it. If you're a dummy like myself, you might have actually bothered to travel an odd 3,500 meters away to complete a quest, only to find out that the mobs in this world don't exactly scale. And if you're even more of a dummy like myself and decide to do this early in the game, when you get given the quest, 
you probably didn't have good enough gear to take on the enemies you encountered, which made the entire journey worthless, or extremely painful, as you had to spend what felt like an eternity whittling down health bars with your low level weapons. It truly feels like a lot of these side quests weren't thought out. They seemed tacked on, added last minute for the sake of extending your playtime. And to add to this, most of these side quests involve going to a location, killing or collecting something, which doesn't help the variety side of questing. They get boring somewhat quickly. Don't get me wrong though, some quests are very interesting and actually get you really cool rewards. I mean, I got this hidden sword from a side quest that was extremely overpowered and that was better than anything else I could pick up for the rest of the game. If you like map marker driven games, like just about any modern open world game, then you'll probably like this game. Let's talk about the story. Of course, there will be no major spoilers. The world is polluted by the ones that came before you. The humans cause their own extinction by the pollution of the planet and forcing themselves off world. They doom their race, making room for the player and the various races of mutated animals to take their place as top of the food chain. But the world is in danger yet again. The world tree is being destroyed by the world eaters and it's your choice to either help the tree or lead to its destruction. This is where one of the interesting gimmicks of the game comes to life. You have the generic yet fun choice of light and dark, good and evil choices throughout your playthrough that determine the ending of the story. Like something out of Fable or Mass Effect, you can pick and choose as your journey goes on. However, this system isn't quite as in depth as it appears, because rather than use a percentage of good and evil, this game just keeps a tally meaning that whenever you do a light task, you get a point, and whenever you do a dark action, you get a point as well. Which wouldn't be a problem if there weren't abilities locked behind these light and dark points. This system allows you to get both the light and dark abilities, which to me defeats the purpose of them being locked behind light and dark. Needless to say, your choices do impact on the world and the story, and getting to see some actual physical change in the world is such a nice touch. I don't normally talk about boss fights, but in this game, there are truly something else. The mechanics, the phases, and the locations differ for all the bosses and create a truly cinematic and pleasurable experience. Each are unique, yet similar. Like something out of Shadow of the Colossus, these beasts tower over you with their physical presence and unique yet familiar styling. No two bosses are the same. They each have different phases, different interactions to take them down, and each change the environment. I don't want to spoil much because getting to experience these bosses for the first time is one of my greatest experiences with this game. They are so well done that honestly I want them to release a DLC of just bosses to go and kill. I can't praise the developers enough because these truly were some of the best boss fights I've played in any recent video game. Unfortunately the combat in this game isn't quite what the trailers and teasers made it out to be. This game's combat is a bit of a mixed bag. It has amazing animations and fantastic visual effects. But all the fancy moves and mesmerizing effects won't hide the sheer lack of sound. There is no point having massive effects if the sounds don't sell the impactfulness of the ability. The melee combat sounds blunt and dull, and just lacks any punch or kick to it. The ability sounds as well all lack that sense of scale, that sense of power. I mean listen to this. This is meant to be the last ability you unlock if you choose the darkness. It's not only this, there are lots of cutscenes throughout the game where it seems like the developers straight up forgot to include any sort of sound effects. I 
I never thought I'd ever have to talk about sound, but it pulls you out of the experience. Every time it happened, I just couldn't help but think how the developers let this through, how someone watched these cutscenes and said, yep, that's good, let's ship it. It's a shame, but there are exceptions. Some of the empowered weapons you'll collect along the way do have impactful sounds that feel satisfying. Some of the guns in particular pack a punch in terms of sound. On the other hand, the weapon variety is phenomenal. The sheer number of combinations, effects and models make each weapon feel unique and different. This is primarily down to this game's crafting system, which I'll get into later. The way you can pick and choose weapon combinations on the fly, from dual wielding to single handed swords, you can pick and choose your playstyle, and can change at any time as well. Its flashy and over the top animations make for what feels like a great experience, until you realise that each weapon or combination of weapons only really has three different combos. But you can also throw in abilities and mutations, which are just abilities but you have to use a different currency to unlock them. For the most part all the abilities and mutations are extremely unique and fun to mess around with. Some might not actually provide you any sort of damage, they're more for utility, to help you out in sticky situations or even help you when exploring the world. The effects are top notch and look amazing, even if they don't deal anywhere near enough damage to enemies. The truth is, I put just about all my points into the magic in this game. I equip weapons and armor that would give me more key and more magic, and still couldn't deal more damage than one of the guns that I had picked up. This leads me to another problem with this game. Did anyone actually play test this? Because a lot of the health bars are not correct. The enemies take far too long to kill, especially if they're in groups of 6 or 7. The smaller enemies seem to be stronger than the larger ones, which makes no sense. My only thought is that they're actually the same health, but because the big ones have health bars at the top of the screen, you notice them going down quicker, or notice them going down more. They need to fix this. I shouldn't be killing the mini boss first, every time. They shouldn't be the easiest to kill, but they are. Needless to say, this combat is bearable with potential. If they're willing to fix these issues, but I honestly can't recommend getting this game for its combat. Hey guys, this is after I finished recording. They actually just released a patch fixing a lot of the sound issues with the combat. I think they just upped the general sound to make it a bit more impactful. So if that was something that you were a bit worried about, definitely worth checking this game out now. If there's something other games can take away from Biomutant, it's this game's exceptional crafting system. With all the exploring you do in the world, you're going to be collecting a lot, and I mean a lot of crafting materials, from weapon components to armor upgrades. And the thing is, these all have cosmetic values as well. You can make weapons and variations to look the way you want them to, and you can make jumbled messes that of your best components that just deal the most damage. The system is so simple and easy to pick up, yet the combinations are endless. You can make banana guns or run around with a samurai sword. This crafting system is just so much fun to mess around in and see what you can create. It makes all the exploration, all those distractions worthwhile. It rewards those who have bothered to collect the best loot by allowing you to make powerful gear that doesn't just last for a couple of levels, it can last 10 and even 15 levels higher than what you made it at. And on top of that, if you find better attachments or components as you go along, you can just swap them out with what you have already. As brief as this is, I can't emphasize enough how amazing this game's crafting system is. I'd personally love to see it in every game. It's one of Biomutant's coolest features, and I often found myself mixing up my items and seeing what crazy creations I could come up with. Overall, Biomune is a solid game. It's got its flaws, but for those that can push past these flaws, there's a decent experience waiting here. It's got its quirky fun charm that doesn't take itself too seriously, but is serious when it needs to be. 
The world design is top notch with amazing colors and locations. The story is solid. The boss fights are exceptional. The combat is a bit flashy but lacks any real impact. And the crafting is perfectly developed feature that really adds another level to playing this game. Is it worth $100? I'd say not. But if you think this game sounds up your alley, don't let me stop you playing it. But for the rest of you who aren't completely sold on it, I'd recommend waiting for sale because I'd personally price this at around $60 to $70. Needless to say though, Biomune is a new IP that kind of came from nowhere. I would love to see more of this game in the future. I want to quickly jump in that about a day ago after I recorded this, they actually released a lot of fixes, including updates, sounds, and audio for combat, as well as fix some of the glitches in quests, so that's even more of a reason to now go and play this stunning game. I'll leave a link to the patch notes so you can have a look yourself in the description below. Like always, thanks for watching. Please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, leave a comment about your thoughts on the game, and subscribe for more content like this.